Bauer kind of alluded to this, how many have you been told that there's nothing that can be done for your tinnitus and that you have to learn to live with it? Usually quite a few. Every patient that comes in that has seen a primary care or someone who doesn't specialize in it tells you, well, it's just a noise you have to live with, a noise you just have to get used to, um, nothing will come of it, but you just have to learn to live with it. And some of us can't. Dr. Bauer said she had tinnitus, doesn't bother her. I have tinnitus and hearing loss in one ear and wear a hearing aid. And my tinnitus is not very bothersome for the most part, but mine is reactive to caffeine, high sodium, wine, noise. So I know all those aggravated. So I watch all of that. As well as, since I have hearing loss, I do have some difficulties, and my hearing aid helps me in those difficult situations. And mine's not a great loss like some of my patients, a mild loss, but enough that I felt bad that I was missing some things my patients were telling me. So I ended up also pursuing a hearing aid. Now, while I wear my hearing aid, do I hear my tinnitus? Not really, but that's also not the case for everybody. Mr. Steger will tell you he still hears his tinnitus with his hearing aids, but he doesn't find it as bothersome. So, and a lot of my patients will say that, that they have their tinnitus, it's there, but it's not very bothersome, doesn't seem as loud. Um, but then I do have those other patients who their tinnitus doesn't change with hearing aids, and that's where the masker comes in and the counseling comes in to help them cope with it. So, I had to put a cartoon on, so. I hope you enjoy it. <laughs> I thought it was very cute and funny. So there are, like I said, the treatments for tinnitus, external sound, the masking that we'll discuss, and then also counseling. So external sound treatments, what can you use for tinnitus? Is broadband noise, as Dr. Watts alluded to, that kind of shower shh sound, they were, many patients report that it seems a little bit more, do I need to talk louder? Thank you, sir. I asked that earlier, you didn't raise your hand to tell me that. So, broadband noise, that shower sound, some patients will find that it's more comfortable than their tinnitus, because every patient that I ask their tinnitus is described differently. Whether mine's kind of a whooshing sound, I have patients who say a ringing sound like Mr. Steger, I have patients who describe a cricket-like sound, circadic, it's all different various sounds. Tinnitus is not just a ringing in the ears. And whenever you produce this shushing sound, the shh sound, most patients find it a little bit more comfortable and a little bit more tolerable than their tinnitus. Music, we all love music. So some patients will use soft music in the light background. Because where do we have the most problem with our tinnitus is in quiet. It, you know, we have a hard time concentrating because it's aggravating us. We can't read the newspaper, we can't do our work, so we'll either use the broadband noise, the shh sound, or some light music to kind of distract it so it doesn't bother us as much. And then we also have it for relaxation and distraction, as I just said, waves of lapping. So the number one sound I have found with tinnitus patients they love water sounds because it's soothing. You listen to the waves lapping against the shore, listening to raindrops falling. And then I had one patient who loved the sound of her shower. You know what she did? She recorded it. And yeah, who would have thought? Record a simple sound and she uses it in her different environments when she's sitting there trying to read the newspaper, concentrating in quiet or trying to fall asleep. So you'd be amazed what you can do. And I always tell all my patients to go sound searching and listen to various sounds with their tinnitus and see what it does. And if it makes it worse, you know to stay away from that sound. If you find it helpful, capture it and use it in your environments. Now these are just a couple things that you can use and you can purchase online, at Walmart, different places. So sound generating machines that play that shush sound. They'll play water sounds, different sounds for you. And as you, a few of you have alluded to, you had issues with sleep. They also offer a sound pillow that you can plug in any audio device into the pillow and play. So your significant other is not bothered by the sound in the bedroom. 
And I've had some patients who use that successively for sleep and actually find the pillow comfortable. Who would have thought a speaker in a pillow would be comfortable? But it actually is. So masking. So as Dr. Watts had alluded to, the combination device with the masker in it. So masking uses a broadband noise, that shush kind of shower sound. And the noise is set to a level that's less than your tinnitus. Your automatic thought is to think, well, why don't you set it right to the tinnitus or louder to drown out the tinnitus? Well, you don't want to do that because research has shown just a little bit of noise, little masking noise, will help with patients with their tinnitus. But it's a time process. So you don't want to overmask it because, to be honest, if you have, like what I do, reactive tinnitus to noise, it can make it louder. And B, most patients find that shushing sound a little bit more tolerable than their tinnitus. And so you want to still be able to hear your tinnitus because over time, what we'll do will reduce the tinnitus in the ear over time. So what will happen is while you're listening to the masking noise, and every patient is different, this is kind of the retraining of the brain theory with tinnitus when you start using sound. So you create this kind of neutral stimulus in the ear, the shushing sound, set it to a level that's comfortable for you and you hear it, but not louder than your tinnitus. And then over time, it can be a six month to a year process, to be honest, because everybody is different. And when you retrain the brain on tinnitus, it's like learning a new language. I mean, how quickly do you learn French or Spanish? So because of that emotional attachment we have to our tinnitus, we have to retrain that. It's kind of like retraining of your thinking of your tinnitus. And so the noise also helps, again, distract you from your tinnitus because what happens is your brain starts to kind of pay attention to it because it's a new noise in the ear, but it's a neutral noise. So over time, that noise kind of just gets pushed in the background. And then a tinnitus kind of slowly gets pushed in the background over time. But again, it's a really long process. It's not an overnight process. It's not a one, two, three, four month process. And every patient that I have worked with has been different. And, but everyone has seemed to have found some benefit or helpfulness, whether it's a hearing aid, a combination device, counseling. They've had various different treatment options. So I know, again, I'm kind of probably going to go over a little bit of some similar things as Dr. Watts. So the maskers, you can have maskers that are air level devices that look like a hearing aid. And that little one on probably your left is one that a lot of my patients use for sleep. So you can wear it in the ear all day, all night. It has a little volume control that you can set the noise. And I have some patients who find that very successful for their sleep. They didn't want the sound pillow. That wasn't enough for them. And they really wanted an ear level device. And that's what they use to help with their tinnitus management for sleep. And then there are hearing aids, which you have heard from Dr. Watts. So I'm just going to and she's discussed the benefit with those and what it can do for your tinnitus. And then again, the combination device, which is the hearing aid plus the masker. And in our clinic, we, and there are some brochures over there and everything and some examples of what we fit. And Resound is one of the companies that we use as well as Phonak. They both offer a hearing aid and combination device. I myself also wear a combination device and it's a Resound one in pearl white. <laughs> I wanted a fun color. They didn't have purple. So, well, I always argue with my patients because they're always worried about how they look with hearing aids. And I always say, your hearing loss is more noticeable than your hearing aids. <laughs> and would you, any of you see, you don't see my hearing aid. Did you see Mr. Steger's hearing aids or Sandy's hearing aids? It's amazing how they've come in technology and size and colors and everything for those of us that are concerned about how they look, but, and they all agreed with me that their hearing loss was more noticeable after they got their hearing aids. <laughs> so, neuromonics. So this device is a wearable device, and it comes, it looks like a little iPod. Let me see if I can get my picture to pull up to give you an idea. So, I know everyone's been saying hearing aids, hearing aids, hearing aids, and all of you are gonna go home thinking, oh my gosh, I'm gonna have to get a hearing aid. 
which again is not a bad thing because I wear one and I think it's a wonderful thing and I know my patients do. But there is another device out there for tinnitus treatment that's wearable and it plays a high frequency stimulus for the brain and again it alludes to that retraining of the brain on tinnitus and your thought process and your emotions to it. And it's also a process that includes wearing the device for four hours a day it's not like music, it's set to your hearing test results. And unfortunately, not everybody's a candidate for it because they can only you know, do the stimulus for such a loud level. So if you have a significant hearing loss, a moderate hearing loss, that's when you would have to really consider hearing aids. Um, but if you have normal hearing or a mild hearing loss, then neuromonics is something that you can consider. It's a process that also includes counseling. And it also is a process that's a lengthy process where it takes six months to a year or a little bit longer depending on the individual and how bothered they're by their tinnitus. And that's the key is how bothered are you by your tinnitus and how much does it annoy you and how much does it affect you. So, and of course, we've all had these reactions to tinnitus. So it makes us annoyed, it makes us anxious, it makes us sad depressed and withdrawn, and I've had a lot of patients who have felt all of these emotions because of their tinnitus, and especially the anxiousness, because they, they worry about it getting worse over time, and as Dr. Watts said, and it doesn't, and research has shown that it doesn't usually typically get worse over time. What happens is I'll have a patient come in and say, Jennifer, my tinnitus is worse, and I don't know what's going on, and we do a hearing test, and they've had a change in hearing, and their hearing's actually gotten worse, and it's not really the tinnitus. And so that's a good thing to know because that's the first thing every patient that comes in and asks is, oh my God, is this going to get louder? Oh my God, is this going to get worse? And it doesn't. And so I just wanted you to see that many people experience these reactions and, and annoyance and depression. And I've had one patient that was extremely depressed by their tinnitus and actually ended up um, I referred them to a psychologist and they, you know, ended up being put on some medication and stuff. They needed kind of dual counseling on their tinnitus and some other things, but it's, it's amazing the emotions you can feel with tinnitus and amazing how it, debilitating it can be for patients and everything. And there is help out there. So it's not that there's nothing you can do about it and you have to learn to live with it. So counseling. And counseling is a huge tool in tinnitus management because of all those reactions that you have and everything, you know, that incumbents it. So, and, you know, you have your sleep affected, your well-being and your concentration because of this noise inside your head and in your ear and it's driving you nuts and everything. And, and I have patients who, yes, you put a hearing aid on, their tinnitus is a lot less, they do really well. And then again, I have those patients who you put the hearing aid on and they're just so emotionally attached to that tinnitus and it doesn't, the hearing aid doesn't change their tinnitus and that's when we have to start getting into counseling techniques and discussing the emotional side and trying to retrain that brain and thought process on the, on the tinnitus. Sorry. And there are various counseling techniques. So we're gonna go to, we're gonna discuss tinnitus retraining therapy, which is what we've been using in our research study. Um, it's been around a long time. And then we also do in our clinic, cognitive behavioral therapy. Bless you, Jen. Bless you, Jennifer. <laughs> and then relaxation therapy. So tinnitus retraining therapy. So this is a therapy that uses counseling and maskers, which we're doing in the study, and I do also do this in the clinic. And this is for Dr. Bauer and myself. What we do is, like I said, work on that emotional side. So, you know, Dr. Bauer alluded to the auditory cortexes and all the different areas of the brain and the auditory system, but we have what we call our limbic system, which is our emotional system. And that's where we have all of our emotions, the anxiousness, happy, sad thoughts, everything. And that, in patients that are really, really, really bothered by their tinnitus and they've done brain scans, that you'll see that limbic system really strong and lit up. And in patients who are not so bothered, you don't see that limbic system so strongly lit up. So if we can work on that system and work on that emotional attachment, that's where you change your thought process and how you feel about your tinnitus. And so this is where the tinnitus retraining therapy counseling comes in. It helps you 
to learn to avoid and learn to kind of rethink on your tinnitus and learn not to put so much attachment to it because that's the key is not attaching to it and letting it run your life, but having your own life and knowing that, yes, I have tinnitus and I'm okay with that. But again, with any of these treatments, it's, it's a commitment and it takes time to retrain that brain and thought process. But patients have found it very helpful. And then there's cognitive behavioral therapy. So this is a little bit different. So in the tinnitus retraining therapy, Mr. Steger, you know, I had counseling presentations that I'd go through with him and explain and everything. In cognitive behavioral therapy, it's kind of a two-way street. You know, there's counseling involved where I bring up things, and there are things that I actually give you homework, and you would do different techniques to kind of retrain your brain. And then you just kind of, and then you keep a, you know, daily log of things and a daily log of your reactions, daily log of if you find anything that aggravates your tinnitus, exacerbates it or makes it better, you know, and then we meet, discuss it, and then see things that we can do about it. Um, so it's a little bit, it's a little bit different in the sense of more is put on you to do and more is your responsibility to some extent. And some patients kind of really like that versus kind of having the PowerPoint presentation and me mainly talking to them and them kind of having some limited interaction. This is more of an interactive therapy. And it's also taking that negative thought process and replacing it with a neutral thought process kind of idea. So instead of, you know, your tinnitus is, oh my God, it's horrendous. And then kind of, you know, replacing it, you know, the tinnitus is okay. But it takes time to get to all those points. But again, it also depends on how bothered you are by your tinnitus. And relaxation therapy. So as Dr. Bauer alluded to, stress plays a huge part in your tinnitus. Stress elevates everything in your body too, not just your tinnitus. So many different biological, blood pressure, all of that can increase. So what relaxation therapy does, it's a biofeedback mechanism. So when your tinnitus is really bothersome, you get really tense. And so what you do is over time is take each of your muscles and you work from your head to your feet and close your eyes and kind of concentrate on each muscle, especially if your tinnitus is really being aggravating and really being bothersome. And just shut your eyes and go from head to toe, each individual muscle relaxing it over time. And it's also a good stress reliever, period, if you're having, you know, if you're having a lot of stress in your life. And tinnitus patients have found this very helpful for their tinnitus in helping it seem a little bit less bothersome, less loud, and less annoying. So these are just a few things. And then, of course, it increases in mental distress. So um, what to do? And as everybody has stated, get your hearing tested. Um, that's the first thing to do is because of, as Dr. Bauer alluded to, I know she's betting every one of you have hearing loss in this room. I'm not going to say that. <laughs> but, you know, that's the first thing to do is to look at the ears and look at your hearing to see if you have any issues in the ears first and then kind of go from there. And depending on the test results, the recommendations, and then also if you're going to be referred on, you know, because we would refer you on to Dr. Bauer if we saw anything that was of concerning to us. So I wanted to put a picture of all of us in the adult audiology clinic and to give our number if you're interested in any appointments with us. So I hope you guys enjoyed the talk and thank you very, very much to all of the patients that presented and I hope you guys learned a lot of things tonight. So, and thank you for your attention.